Uncertainty over the timing of the first Fed rate cut has put investors on edge, but there's one area that's helping to reassure the street, and that's fourth quarter earnings. Now, two-thirds of the S&P 500 companies have reported results so far, and data out from Bank of America showing that over 70% of companies that have reported have beat. That's above the historical average. We want to bring in Neil Mukherjee. He's a TIAA Wealth Management Division's Chief Investment Officer. Neil, it's great to have you here at the desk with us. Let's talk about earnings focus right now in terms of the reports that we've gotten so far, better than expected, at least when you take a look, uh, most, I guess, a wider look at the majority of earnings that we've gotten. Is that enough, though, to keep the market's momentum intact? Yeah, it's a great question because all of 2023 was about valuations. And uh, this year, the focus is going to be on earnings, and earnings better deliver for the stock market to move forward. And like you said, earnings are coming in better than expected. That's great news. It's still tracking roughly mid to low single digit in terms of sales growth, earnings growth. So it's not that stellar, but it's better than expected. The key question here is, does technology keep powering through with their earnings growth? And they have been the biggest contributor to earnings in the fourth quarter. They're expected to be the biggest contributor in Q1 as well. If technology doesn't deliver on their promised earnings and they don't deliver better than expected, I think, in 2024, that could be volatile for earnings as well as the stock market. One swing factor, I know the consensus is pricing in about 10% earnings growth, is the cyclical sectors. If they begin to participate, there could be more upside. What's the specific area within technology, though, that needs to stay strong in order for the rest of the market to just kind of hang on the coattails for well, the Well, I think term? it's the secular growth areas, okay. uh, really. So within technology, we still like uh, software. We like areas like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, cloud computing. Cloud computing, remember, if you go back a few uh, years ago, everybody was talking about cloud computing, and now it's like being replaced by artificial intelligence. But go back to cloud computing. We may be in the fifth inning here in the US in terms of companies transforming to the cloud because it lowers their expenses. Outside the US, we're in the first inning. So this is a long-term theme. So those are the areas that we would focus on. Technology, a little bit extended. We're being selective. We're favoring those names which have rock-solid balance sheets, and they have access to those total addressable markets that I talked about. Yeah, one of the criticisms of the market's momentum that we've seen, obviously, is that a lot of that has been driven by just a handful of tech names. We started to see a little bit more of a broadening, broadening out in participation. If we don't see more of that ahead here in 2024, what risk do you think that poses to the market? It does pose a risk, because uh, if you look at the top 10 stocks in the the S&P 500, they're more than 30% of the index now. And those same top 10 names are contributing roughly 20%, 20 to 23% to the earnings of the S&P. So they're punching above their weight slightly, but not too much, because the growth rates are pretty stellar in those areas, which is why I said they better deliver on those growth rates for the markets to do well. But I do think the concentration risk is there. The biggest thing for the markets this year is going to be the Fed rate cuts. Earnings is number one, Fed rate cuts is number two. Just how much wind could the Fed take out of the sales of the market if we don't hear the number of rate cuts that we want to hear? Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Uh, one thing the economy has done is it's proved everybody wrong because uh, the economy is still powered ahead despite all the rate hikes that the Fed I mean, has done. Red hot jobs print that we got just last week. 350,000 jobs yeah. uh, in the month of January blew out all expectations. So the economy is still good. So it's going to be a combination of economic growth and the Fed rate, rate cuts, which will lead to earnings story, which will lead to the stock market story as well. So the Fed can introduce volatility if they push back on this notion of rate cuts. You saw Neil Kashkari this morning say two to three rate cuts. The Fed has said three rate cuts. The market loves to bully the Fed. They went ahead and priced in six rate cuts. Chair Powell came back strong and said no March cuts uh, are going to happen. So this push and pull will happen. The bottom line is, the market is pricing in a decent number of rate cuts. And if they don't get a majority of that, that will introduce some volatility. The other thing I'm worried about is if interest rates don't come down, um, or if they actually go up, then that will put more pressure on the smaller companies uh, in the equity universe. They have weaker balance sheets, weaker earnings. And those are the companies which employ the bulk of the people in this country. So that is a concern as well. So 
How much volatility? It'll depend on the combination of the economic strength and the Fed rate cuts. The Fed, I think, will deliver. Uh, I think inflation has gotten to a point 2% on a three-month, six-month annualized basis. It's good. It'll be good for the Fed to, I mean, they're seeing the probability of a soft landing right in front of them. The door is a little bit cracked open and they're gonna to try to walk through it. They're going to normalize interest rates. That's usually good for equities and bonds. If they have to cut because the economy is going into a recession, that's a different story. But right now it looks like soft landing, normalizing interest rates, Fed cuts, that's a good combination. Yeah, how many cuts do you think would make sense at this point? Obviously there's a lot of uncertainty, but given what we know now. Yeah, I think two to three makes a lot of sense uh, to me. Three is a good number, I think, to go by. And I think uh, Chair Powell was good to push back on the March rate cut, uh, and the market has almost faded that out now, so which is good. I think six seems excessive to me because six is, is good in the sense that if we have a recession, six and more makes sense because three rate cuts to me sounds like a good number. So I'm almost seeing this environment in the context of what happened in the mid 1990s. So if you, and w where we had the soft landing. So mid 1990s, in 1994, the economy was in the third year of an expansion recovering from the 91, 90 uh, recession. The Fed was getting a little bit worried about inflation. They hiked interest rates uh, by 300 basis points. They went from 3% to 6%, inflation moderated. In 1995, they pivoted. They cut interest rates three times. So they just adjusted the policy rates lower, not necessarily went all in on a rate cutting cycle. That led to the soft landing, and we all know that set us up for the rest of the decade where we had 3% average uh, uh, GDP growth, employment was stable, interest rates were stable, and the stock market did what it did. I think the Fed sees that situation forming and the productivity stories coming through. And like I said, the Fed will try to calibrate interest rates lower without either doing too much or too little. Mm -hmm. Neil, great to have you here in studio yeah. with us. Thanks so much for taking the time and the context and insights here. Neil Mukherjee, who is the TIA Wealth Management Division Chief Investment Officer. Appreciate it.